Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beating the Press podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, today, we have two sumptuous matches coming up on the weekend. The appetizer, Man City versus Newcastle. And of course, the big one, the main course, Liverpool taking on Manchester United. Now, joining me this evening to preview these two games, we have with us Speedy. Uh, big up to the viewers and subscribers, all the Liverpool fans out here. Big up. Returning to the podcast as well, we have Benji. Greetings, greetings everyone. Beating the press. Give thanks. And a new face on the platform we have with us joining us from Canada, we have Leon. Welcome viewers and subscribers. All right, let's not waste any more time, gents. Let's jump straight into it. Weekend, big matches, big implications again. This time around, we have Man City facing off with Newcastle. Speedy, tell us, what are your views on these two teams coming into this fixture? Um, well, <laughs> I think both teams are dying for a win. I mean, Newcastle can see Liverpool breathing down their necks. If it wasn't for, you know, that unfortunate draw against Crystal Palace, I think we'd have been closer to them or round about theirs. I think both teams need a win, but I think um the fact that City is going for a title, I think that they would need it more. So I'm expecting City to come out, you know, high press. I think that Newcastle will, you know, try to hit them on the counter and keep that defensive shape that has brought them so far um, and done so well for them this season. So I'm looking for, uh, you know, cat and mouse game, end to end. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Otis, what say you? Uh, I mean, City at home, Arsenal now having a five-point lead at the top of the table. What say you? How do you see both teams? Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle on a bit of a, a bad form of late after a brilliant start to the season. I think they failed to win in their last four. Uh, two two draws and a loss. Uh, so coming after the defeat at the weekend, the cup in the cup to Manchester United. Not sure how 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 much that would affect them because I think they really wanted that one, but they they fell short in the end. City on the other hand, as Speedy said, they're on a title charge. They have some points to make up, and I think. They they start as favorite in in my books and I think in the bookmakers books as well, so I think City they still haven't got to the heights that we think they would have gotten to or we know they can get to, but still they are Man City they are the defending champions, and I think this match could be a good one. Yes, definitely. Uh, some serious title implications there. Uh, both team at the higher end of the table and really going at it. You know, uh, Newcastle going for that top four and Manchester City, of course, uh, looking to pretty much overtake Arsenal at the top. But Leon, I'll jump, I'll bring you in at this point. How do you see both teams coming into this fixture? I mean, I think both both teams are hot and cold at the moment, especially City. So I think they would they would want to like rectify, gain some form ahead of this match, big top four battle. So I think City will want to get some form on this one, coming out all guns blazing. While Newcastle would want to like bounce back from the FA Cup, from the Carabao Cup defeat against Man United. So I yes, think yes. we should have a good game. Yes, definitely looking forward to this one, of course, you know. Ah, uh, but speedy. In terms of tactics and team selection, what say you? How do you see Pep lining up his boys? You know, Pep is usually rather unpredictable. And of course, Eddie Howe, uh, coming off that defeat, what will be the mental state of the Newcastle players? And indeed, are you looking at either coach making any tactical or team selection changes for this one? Well, um, in terms of Newcastle, I think that they they are the team that um is suffering mentally when into the situation more than Man City, in my opinion. I think coming off that Carabao Cup defeat, you know, the mood might be down. I think that it might be important for him to freshen things up 
you know, probably start Ryan Fraser and probably, mm-hmm. you know, freshen up the defense line, you know, probably put um you know, somebody else instead of Batman, seeing that he probably is going to the defense line. As it pertains to City, um I think that City probably will go three at the back. I think that Pep will want to, you know, put Lucas on the back foot in the first you know? And I think that this season so far when he's used straight about they've seen more attacking. Um in terms of the fact that they don't have um fast wingers as they normally do. So they have to create overloads and um create space and bounce the ball. Mm. I think that he'll use straight the back and crowd him in. So he yes. can, you know, get around um Grimarish and players. Yeah, you you do raise a, a very good point there, Speedy, in terms of uh as you mentioned, uh, a player overload. You know, we see Rico Lewis oftentimes being deployed almost as a fourth midfielder to overload yeah, the midfield. I, I think he, he was playing um defensive mid in the last game. Indeed, indeed. So that's a, that tactic that implies it. Yes, indeed. Yes, uh, definitely a, 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 a pep tactic, so to speak. You know, he, he's always. What should I say? Surprising us with some sort yeah. of unusual tactical setups. You know, Bernardo Silva playing wing back and all these things. But Otis, how do you see the game now from a tactical point of view? You know, from both a Newcastle point perspective as well as from a Man City perspective. You know, Pep, how the you know the coaching battle? How do you see it playing out? Yes, similar thoughts to Speedy on as it relates to. To City, I think with Cancelo now out of the club, I think this is how Pep sees his team playing the, the, with the three defenders, um, three centre backs mostly, but Ake being flexible enough to slide over to cover at full back. So I think Raji is also very capable in the midfield and he could drop back if needed. So I think it gives them the numbers in midfield, in attack, and I think it. It is not quite like last season where he had an extra midfielder, but I think he kind of creates that now with with this with this new formation where he gets the numbers in attack. Uh, Grealish and Mares playing playing well. Foden is another player who had had a bit of a rough patch, but I think he's now coming back into his own. As it relates to Newcastle from a tactical perspective, at the weekend I think they 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 didn't play badly. I think in the final third they lacked that that final pass. Yes. And I think not only I think Wilson, he didn't have a good match. I think but I think he was starved in the in the general in the grand scheme of things. So I think Isaac could come in for him. Isaac is much more mobile, uh, more for dribbler. And in a game like this where you, you probably won't have much of the the ball as opposed to Wilson who's a more in behind uh finish on the on the end of something. I think Isaac can create for himself. And I think in a game like this where they probably won't have much of the ball, I think Isaac could could have more of an impact over Wilson. Wilson. So I expect that change from Eddie Howe. Otherwise, from that, given how the season has gone for them, I think they'll be compact at the back and accent Maximan and Almiron on the counter-attack and Isaac, like I think, and Bruno Gimaris in the midfield. So I think we, we kind of know what to expect. From from both teams, mm-hmm. it's just to see on the day which which team comes out. Yes, some some interesting thoughts there. You know, I I believe you're anticipating, you know, uh, Newcastle pretty much going there in their defensive shape. You know, and trying to limit the the attacks coming from City. You know, staying compact, uh, staying defensively solid. You know, yeah. and as you say, playing on the counter. But Leon, how do you see this one from a tactical point of view? And is there any particular player you're looking for in, in this fixture? Well, I pretty much agree with Otis there. I think the shout for um, Isaac instead of Wilson is a pretty good shout. Mm-hmm. Knowing Newcastle, they're a very defensive team. So they want to make use of his speed along with Almiron and Maximil. With um with with City now, I think instead of Lewis. I think he'll go with Walker to try to combat the counter-attacking method from Newcastle, but it's pretty much the same at lineup, I would mm. say. Yeah. 
Got you. Yeah, definitely. That that that's a solid point there in terms of that Walker addition. You know, uh, speed might be essential in limiting the 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 counter. You know, City has been susceptible to to that counter during this season as well. So, you know, speed will definitely shore up that defense and minimize the number of counter attacks that Newcastle may very well have. But speedy, coming back around to you. Generally, no. How do you see this one playing out, and what, what what's the final result you're looking at? Uh, I think that um, Man City will come out winning the victors. Um, I'm looking for a uh, early Haaland when I keep in the world. Okay, okay. But in in terms of a final score, how do you see it? Two nil. Oh, two nil Newcastle. <laughs> okay, all right, 2 nil. Yeah, that's a good shot. I mean, the last uh Newcastle game ended 2 nil, albeit in the Caribou Cup. Yeah. But yeah, it will definitely be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, you know. Uh Otis, so how do you see this one? You alluded to the fact that uh, you know, Newcastle may see less of the ball and City being totally ball dominant, but we oftentimes know it's not possession that counts. It's, you know, who puts the ball in the back of the net. So how do you see this one playing out and give us your final result? Um, I think this is a this game will be a test for Newcastle and their mental resolve, how, how they can bounce back from the disappointment at the weekend. Uh, I don't think they've had any such experience during this newfound quote-unquote, success they've had so far. So I think it's interesting to see how they'll show up. Uh, City, though, they are they are a well-oiled machine, and I think Pep will, 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 will have been telling them that, look, they lost at the weekend. They will come out wanting to, to make. So I think he'll have his team ready. And I think given Arsenal winning and maintaining their gap, City can't afford to slip up and... I don't see them slipping up. I think they, they'll run out 3-1 victors. 3-1 victors. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the, the first encounter between these two teams ended 3-3, three, three, you know, yeah, with yes. Newcastle leading at several points during the game. And, and City, City, coming City went back. down to 10 man in that game, if you remember correctly. Indeed, indeed. You yeah. know, that one ended in a 3-3 three, three draw, I believe, at, at St. James's Park. Yeah. But Leon, how do you see this one playing out? And what's your take on the final result? Well, I don't think it'll be like the last game, the three three, because as you know, a lot of players do lo lose losing their form for Newcastle. So I don't think Newcastle's firing all all cylinders right now. So I think it's more of a I would say probably a one nil. <laughs> a one nil to, to City. Mm -hmm. Newcastle will be very defensive, trying to disrupt City's play. So I think probably it's a it's a one nil and knowing City, when they face like a low block this season, they have been getting Holland into the game. So I don't think there'll be much goal. So I think it's probably a, a 1 0. That's my two cents yes. on it. Uh, interesting perspectives there. To be honest, I'm going to sit on the fence for this one. <laughs> what a shock. I, I'm going <laughs> to go 1 1, you know? Uh, I'm <laughs> with, yeah, I'm with both of you. Uh, I think, obviously, we know that. Newcastle has the meanest defense in the league. However, attacking wise, you know, a, a number of their players who were firing earlier in the season, the Almirans, the Brunos, you know, the Wilsons, they are somewhat yeah. off farm. So it's difficult to see at this point where the goals will come from, you know, with, as you said, City will have majority of the ball. So unless an individual effort from a St. Maximin, for example, going on of those long busting dribbles, you know, that's that I think that will be the trust of the Newcastle attack. And of course, City, ball possession, and will always be searching for that opening, you know. I mean, the likes of Haaland is there, always has a goal. Kevin De Bruyne with his shot from outside the area is always gonna be a test for the keeper as well. So while I do feel uh, City will win for some odd reason. I'm going to trust my instincts and go with a draw. Not a odd reason. It's a, it's a good, it's a good decision. Yes, yes. That is it. That is it. <laughs> but anyhow, let's segue across to the big one. On Sunday, 
we have Liverpool facing off with Manchester United, the big derby, the big one in England. I believe this is the biggest rival in England currently, even bigger than the local derbies which both teams participate in, you know. So, Speedy, how do you see this one? Liverpool at home, Man City away. Talk to us. Well, I mean, Liverpool against Casimir FC, yeah. Sorry about that. I mean, <laughs> against Manchester United, you know. Has always been a quality game. Regardless of where both teams are at, in terms of financial, in terms of quality. And I am actually... To be honest, before the game against Wolves, I was kind of nervous, but I saw a lot of patterns and a lot of plays in the Wolves game. And I saw that the confidence that Virgil got from that goal that he scored, you know, and Konate coming back, you know, Jota, you know, getting back into some sort of fun. You know, Nunes <laughs> being an absolute beast on the wing, you know, he's, he's had a, a, he had a wonderful game yesterday. Before that, it's just a shame that he missed the distance. The, 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 the. I mean, tactically, it will be hard to break down that Manchester United team. I mean, Casimir has been all over the place, dictating play, breaking up play, you know, giving confidence to the defence, confidence to the forwards. Rashford is a, a, a transform player. I think last season, he couldn't even beat a man or an or a inanimate object. You know, this season is <laughs> so you know, um, Trent will have his work cut out for him around here. Um, also, I'm looking to see um Tashimika's start. I think that it would be good to you know have Rabo come on so that you know when they if they start Anthony or they start somebody else over there, you know, you can have that recovery piece in the second half. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a very exciting match on the weekend. Can't wait for it. Yes, quite quite a big take there, Speedy. I must say, you know, uh, quite a bit of controversial comments uh, coming out there. You know, dropping your word and. Yeah. <laughs> it's a derby, my friend. Ah, I see, I see. But bringing in Otis at this point, you know, uh, how do you see both teams, Otis, for this one? You know, their farm. You know how they've looked generally over the season, and of course coming into this game. You know, how do you see it? Ah, uh, United. Arguably one of the best teams in Europe at, at this moment in time. Uh, the record speaks for itself, I think. The most wins in Europe as it stands right now, more than any other team, let me just say, in the top five leagues. So I think United flying at the moment. And um, is that, I heard the manager in the week saying, this team doesn't know how to lose. And I think that's a good habit to develop. Mm. Liverpool, on the other hand, we spoke about hot and cold about in the previous match. This is a hot and cold team this season. Wolves, I, I wouldn't use Wolves game as a marker of anything, given how Liverpool has played this season. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I'm not convinced, to be honest. I, I'm not sure which Liverpool will show up on the weekend. However, history says they'll show up. So. I, I'll err on the side of history and say we'll have a good matchup, Liverpool, with the crowd behind them. I think they'll come out flying like they did against Madrid in the first 50, 20 minutes at least. They came out on the front foot and put Madrid on the back foot. So I expect more of that, hopefully for a more sustained period for the Liverpool fans. But I think given even that, I think Ten Hag has instilled a sense of belief and a resilience in this team where I think they'll weather... I think we had a, a spell like that at Arsenal, if you remember, where Gunners came out mm. on the front foot from minute one and they had us on the back foot. And in the blink of an eye, United were leading one nil. So I don't think we're daunted by, by this atmosphere, which he would have prepped his team for come at the weekend. It's a derby. It's the biggest match in England. So... They'll know what to expect. So I think it'll, it'll be a good matchup. Like I said, history tells me that in this fixture, Liverpool always plays good and United are currently playing good. So I think you should set your alarms for this one. Come, come now the weekend. Yes, indeed. Big game, big game. Two big teams, big matchup. You know, uh, as you say, 
you know, as you say, Manchester United is flying currently while Liverpool seem to be blowing hot and cold, you know. The, the facts are the facts and the, the table doesn't really lie, you know. Manu pretty much in the race for the quadruple, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put it, call it that, you know. This time yeah, last year, it was, it was Liverpool, which the media was touting as being in the race for the quadruple. So it's almost a reverse of fortunes currently. But Leon, how do you see these two teams coming into this fixture? I mean, as as far as the quadruple goes, as our manager says, one game at a time. So we're not really thinking on that. We're just thinking for Liverpool ahead. And as for Liverpool, hot and cold, Otis said, but it's mostly cold. But as you know, it's a derby and farm goes out the window. So I think once we weather like the first probably 10 minutes at Anfield, we should see a decent game from Man United. And I think I think it'll be a good game. We have Rashford on form. We have, as he says, Casemiro Cam- FC. <laughs> so it'll be a, a decent matchup, I think. Yes, definitely. A, a, a sumptuous fixture of, of the highest caliber coming up there on Sunday, you know. But Speedy, I want to bring you in at this point. Let's now get more technical from a tactical point of view. And as well as team selection, earlier you alluded to a, a few changes within the Liverpool ranks. But how do you see it from both a Man United perspective as well as a Liverpool in terms of formation and tactics? Do you see any changes from the usual suspects? Uh, the only change I can think of is probably, you know, replacing Elliot Anderson from the last game. And you know, saying that I wanted um Tashimikas to start more than likely, I know that it will be Robertson. So mm. I think that he made that change as well. I'm hoping that he continues with the same front line. I think that uh he needs Jota. Jota has always been a player, knows how to turn up against me. I think that he will be key on the weekend. Um, I think that Nunes as well. His um attacking runs up left, you know, will be integral to us you know, breaking past and you know, getting in behind Manchester United, which has proven you know relatively difficult for most teams. From a Manchester United perspective, I don't think that uh they'll make much changes um in terms of the last Premier League. Um, I think that uh, Anthony will start. I think that he use Greg Horace up front as well. And also Rashford after them. I'm expecting them to come on with phones blazing, you know, high press trying to quiet down the Anfield goal. And I think that, you know, whoever gets that first goal will be very, very important. So from both perspectives, I think that you know Liverpool will be coming with cautious, but also confident. And trying to get behind Manchester United, and uh, Manchester United will come out and trying to press high in the aggressive, win the ball high up the pitch and create um overloads, create um um hold up play for um other players, you know, resources you know, and bring in other people into the game. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Yes, Speedy, quite a, a, a comprehensive <laughs> quite a comprehensive breakdown there. I'm not sure if you'll you left anything for the rest of us to add. <laughs> but yeah. but but Otis, I see leading up to this game, I, I see where Luke Shaw picked up a knock and was absent from that FA Cup game against West Ham. I mean, if 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 Shaw cannot go, how do you see the Man United team lining up? I think that that's a key. That's a key thing to look out for. I think Luke Shaw has been really playing really well this season, and um, Malasia is a is a decent uh fullback to step in. But I think Luke Shaw brings something that he doesn't. Luke Shaw is is a solid two way fullback. Let's say he he has a good delivery when he when he's in the the, the attacking third, and he's a decent enough defender. So I think that could be a key. A key loss for Manchester United if he if it turns out he can't show up and of course on that left side, whoever starts they will have the job of defending Mohamed Salah. So, um, that's a that's a 
a key position for Manchester United. But I think this this is a there are key matchups all over this field, all, all over the field yeah. this this weekend. Rafa. I think Liverpool midfield has been highly criticized this season. So I think they they'll need a good game from their midfield. This is Harvey Elliott, I think, played well in the midweek. It'd be interested to see if Klopp sticks with him. Um and like we said, Casimir has been playing well. Um, Fred, for some reason, is playing well as well. Uh, Bruno Fernandez, he's a he's a hard worker, and he he's always gonna start. Doesn't matter what happened in the fullback eras, of course, on the wings. I think key matchups all over. Rashford over there. Salah, like I said, Nunes is playing off the left. I think. Um, I think at least that's where I like to see him play. I'm not sure if that's where he'll he'll line up, Klopp will line him up, but I think he plays better off the left where he could drift in and shoot. Uh Liverpool tend to play with a high line at times, and I think that could also be crucial with um United looking to get in behind on the counter-attack with Rashford and Anthony. Not so much white horse, of course, but um so I think there's key matchups all over all over the pitch this season, this this matchup. And I think it, it's gonna be a, a very a very good watch and I hope it doesn't disappoint. Yes, definitely. I mean the, the first encounter ended two one in, in the favor of Manchester United. That was early in August. Very early. I think that was the third know. game of the season. So, right, yeah. right, right, right. A lot so... has changed since, yeah. A lot definitely has changed since, you know, uh, we could say Manchester United is flying currently. So, Leon, how do you see these two teams matching up, though, from a tactical point of view and also from, you know, a team selection? Do you see any surprise inclusions, per se? No, what I would say for Liverpool, I think, I probably think Jata won't start because it just, Comes back from an injury. So I think they'll go with Salah, Gakpo, and Nunes off the left. And I think probably Henderson comes in for Elliot to help with help train to the defensive aspect with Rashford in form. I think um when it comes on to Man United, you know, I think probably Juan Bissaka will start instead of Dillo. But you know, he offers that defensive prowess. So I think he'll he'll come in and I think Fred will I think the midfield will be Fred. Casimir and Bruno, and the uh, front three with Rashford, Weghorst, and and uh, Anthony. But I think, as we know, Ten Hag during the season, I think he'll probably in the second half you'll see Weghorst drop into ten, Rashford up top, and probably Garnacho comes on because we know we know of Liverpool's high line, and we have some very explosive forwards. So I think those are really the key matchups that we should look out for. Key points, dear Leon. Key points. I I believe you're spot on in some of your analysis there. At least I share a lot of your views there. You know, uh, for sure. I think experience. You know, Klopp is gonna go the route of experience. In my opinion, you know, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But that point about Henderson and pretty much doubling up on Rashford. You know, giving some support to the fullbacks in that light i think that that's definitely a, a tactic we've seen club employ during his tenure thus far so i i do believe that's a very solid point and i'm looking forward to seeing how both teams match up to be honest you know uh should be a tough game for both teams uh, as mentioned it's a derby game it's a rival game it's at anfield that atmosphere that you'll never walk alone sort of synergy you know and, uh... I think the last time Man United won at Anfield was January 2016. So mm. <laughs> that was even a 1-0. So yes, a lot yes. of history. A, lot of, a history. lot of history indeed. A lot of history. You know, Otis alluded to that earlier where, you know, history does play a role when it comes down to these matchups. And it's as if both teams lift their games, you know, once they meet, you know. So, they, you know, poor farm could be there, but it's all of a sudden... You know, the, that team finds another gear to, to, to match up. But Speedy, talk to us now in terms of how do you see this one panning out? What's your take on the result? Uh, I think that Liverpool, you know, is surprised number one. That you end up in front of the G1 league. I think that, you know, the, the crowd behind us and the fact that 
we have been playing so bad um all season. And the fact that you know Top knows how important this game is to him. And he knows um how to get the players riled up for a big fixture like this. I'm looking forward to an explosive start by Liverpool. I'm looking forward to an even better second half by Liverpool. Oh, your 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 son cut out just now, dear Speedy. Did you say three one Liverpool? Yeah, three one Liverpool. Okay, okay, all right. Otis, what say you? Um, I think like I like I, we mentioned earlier, Liverpool should come out with all the energy. I think this match means. It's a big match, but I think Liverpool needs this win. I think they they need that that win to get them back on track. I think they 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 won earlier in the season. They won against City, and we thought that was a turning point for them, but it didn't quite materialize. And um, I think after the dem demoralizing loss to Madrid at home in in the Champions League, I think they 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 they'll want to make amends in another big fixture like this. So I think they'll come out blazing. However, however, having said that, I think United, this version of United, Ten Hag's United, they, they they always seem to find a way. They 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 they're not playing champagne football by any means, but they they stay in games and they they make use of the chances. Rashford, in particular, has been the chief person responsible for that. So. I, as much as I would love to say United will win, I think this game will end up being a draw. Mm. Two two, mm. surprising scoreline there from Otis. Two uh, yes. Uh, Leon, what say time. you? Uh, how do you see this one panning out, and what's what's yeah. your take on the result? I think it's a United win for sure. Not for sure, but I think it's a United win. I think it's it's probably a it's it's probably it, it will be close. Probably a two one, a one nil. Because I think probably in those first fifteen minutes, mm. Liverpool might get a goal. But I think United have enough to come back from a 1-0 deficit as we've seen throughout the season. United can win in a lot of ways. And Ten Hag, I think United has the most contribution from substitutions. So I think we'll we'll come out 2-1 winners. 2-1 winners. Well, for this one, for me, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call it a, a, a two-one win for for Liverpool. <laughs> so I'm gonna go out on a limb. Uh, Excellent. I mean, from a if you were a betting person, obviously the smart money is on Man United. But oh, really? for some odd reason, I am a lover of history. So I'm that. gonna go from a historical context for this one. And as 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 Leon mentioned, since the 2015-2016 season, uh, United haven't won at Anfield. So, from that point of view, I'm not opposed to the draw which Otis predicted, but I'm leaning more towards a Liverpool win than a, a, a Manu win, to be honest with you. So, that's my take, but it should be an exciting weekend. You know, lots of matches. Uh, the title race is on. The race for top four is on. And, you know, of course, we have the relegation battle taking place. But that brings us to the end of the podcast. I'd just like to thank Speedy, Benji, Leon for passing through and sharing their views and thoughts. I'd just like to continue to encourage our viewers and subscribers to share the podcast, to, to like and subscribe, and, of course, turn on that notification bell so we can pretty much grow the channel. But until next time, this is Rafa signing off.